Do you need help? There's nothing to help with. What are you doing? Going fishing. I'm telling you, there's no fish out there. How did this happen? Come with me. What are we gonna do? Change the world. All right, so first question for you guys. When I was watching the film yesterday, I couldn't help but think, the three of you have pretty amazing lives. So I want to know, as people with huge faith, what do you attribute, do you attribute your success to faith or to very hard work? Or both? And both, definitely. Yes. Uh, you, yes. And it, you, you have to be um, available. You have to be there when the opportunity comes, and you have to pray for it. So it's, it's, it's definitely both. That will, would, would be my answer. Um, yeah, yeah. A lot of hard work and, and believing in it. So, you know, well, for both of you also, you know, Mark, you came to this country, you were a nanny, you sold T-shirts in Venice. Mm -hmm. So did faith, did you always believe, okay, I would create something bigger than myself? You know, I'm 54 years of age almost, and um, every decade you get smarter and more aware of who's really in control, which is God. You know, and praying is very, very important. But it's also important for people to know that you do have to actually get off the couch and do something. You can't sit at home and pray and think that someone's going to knock on the door and give you a job or start a business or have an, you know, deliver you a movie. You do have to get your butt off the couch and do something. And so you need to pray, have faith, and when you have a calling, take some action. Your thoughts? When you were growing up as a young girl, did you believe that this life would happen for you? Well, I certainly, I grew up in Northern Ireland uh, during the war, and uh, I came to America with a dream, looking, looking for what we call the American dream. And I feel so blessed that I found it. Um, I think a combination of willing to work hard and getting some good breaks and um, remembering to be kind along the way, um, which I think is one of the most important things. That, um, but yeah, it's been, I don't know that we could have dared to dream this big though, that, um, that our, what began its life uh, on the Bible series has become this beautiful, epic, cinematic experience. And we're very excited that Son of God will open on February 28th. So tell me about bringing the miniseries from the small screen to the big screen. This is a, this is a journey. I think the, the big difference would be probably the, the, the Bible. It's more of um, a, doc a documentary thing, an epic story of the whole Bible. But this is a more of a personal journey uh, of the life of Jesus and bringing the audience closer to him and his story. And I think it, it, having the time of, of having an experience fully in the big screen with the wonderful score of Hans Zimmer, you know, embracing with, and you can share it with your family or your friends, your community, whatever, in a big screen all together is different from have to wait for, you know, for another week for the next episode. Uh, it's definitely, both are equally good, but it's, it's a whole different experience. And the cinematic thing, I think it just boosted up the, the story, which is already wonderful, and make it bigger, and it deserves to be on a big screen. So what do you two say, you know, a lot of times when people think of religion, it can make some people uncomfortable. Sometimes people think, you know, God is, you know, something that's bigger than themselves, but it makes them anxious. Why do you think that's so when people get uncomfortable around religion or God or faith? I think in general, in some media circles, people can say that people get uncomfortable around God, but actually more Americans as a community go to church than do anything else. More Americans go to church on Sundays than watch football. You know, church and God are huge drivers. And I think the Bible series with 100 million viewers and now this movie Son of God illustrates that in such a huge way of what is it that Americans desire, their hope? What does this nation stand for? And the Bible and free enterprise are the two things that built the nation. Do you, do you think that, you know, someone comes in maybe as a non-believer, they go to see the movie. What do you hope that person 
comes away with after seeing this film? Well, you know, I think that what we have done with Son of God is tell the story of the life of Jesus. Um, the movie takes us from the Christmas story, um, the birth of Jesus, through his ministry, his mission, the miracles, his death and resurrection, and it ends with the Great Commission. So if you came to the movie and you didn't know anything about Jesus, you would really get a sense of, of the, the journey of his life. And it was our job to make sure that that journey emotionally connected with you. Mm -hmm. So we told the story on the one hand as a political thriller. Mm -hmm. There's a three-pointed triangle of the Romans led by Pontius Pilate, the temple authorities led by Caiaphas, the disciples led by Jesus, and they're all on this collision point into Jerusalem with the ticking clock of Passover, mm -hmm. which creates this really intense dynamic. At the same time, it's a beautiful love story. Um, there's an intimacy to it, and we hope that you're drawn in, that you emotionally engage with the story, and that you get a sense that you really know who Jesus is. Mm -hmm. So what would you say, what, what's next? I mean, we've had the miniseries, now we have the film. Will there be another film? I know there's another show coming. What's, what's next? Well, 2013, the Bible series, number one series in America. Uh, 2014, Son of God, this epic feature film. Hopefully number one right. film <laughs> in America. Right. And, and, and uh, in 15, we're working on a series called AD, which starts at the crucifixion. Um, and we're hoping Diogo will be in it. We'll still have to get him. <laughs> uh, and um, carries on and tells this dramatic story of what's going on in that first century. I mean, what, what was shown in Son of God? As Rome said, this political thriller, this was really tense times. The disciples didn't know they were in the Bible. They're li living their lives. They're following a charismatic leader who they think may be King David and following him. It's only revealed much later that he's actually the son of God. So it's very tense times, but in that epic scale, there's this intimate, beautiful Personal. love story. Yeah. We must arrest this false prophet. But what if he is who they say he is? Will somebody tell me? Peter, come. Answer if you can. One of you here will betray me to my enemies. I want someone to tell me what is the soul of a man? Jesus of Nazareth, you are charged with blasphemy. He has employed demons to heal. He threatened to destroy the temple. Tell us, are you the son of God? I am.